Greetings and welcome to another VMBlock screencast. In this screencast, we're going to continue our journey with your programming and look at how the free memory pointer is handled and managed by Solidity and how we can access the free memory pointer using YAWL. We'll also look at the M size operation that's provided part of the YAWL programming language. So let's take a look at the contract here that we've got. Now I've continued on from where we were on the last video and I've made it I've made a few changes. So one thing you'll notice is I've added this hard hat console. This is gonna help us in a little bit to output the values of the free memory pointer. I've also added this array in storage. It's a fixed size array of two uint 256 bit values. So essentially we're storing um, 64 bytes of um, data into storage at this point. And I'm storing the values 10 and 11, which re is represented as 0xA and 0xB in hexadecimal. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that later on I can copy this into memory and we can see how this affects the free memory pointer. Now, I do this in a function down here called free memory pointer, and I'll just walk through it and then we'll demo it. So what I'm doing here is I've got two local variables, two local variables which are bytes 32 each, and uh, one is called pointer start or PTR start, and the other one is PTR end. And what I'm doing here is I'm using assembly to load directly from the memory um, the value at position 0x40, which is the location that Solidity stores the free memory pointer. So this is going to bring us back the starting position of the free memory pointer, which you may recall is 0x80. We'll see that in action when we log this out here. Now, the next line is where I'm copying the memory, um, sorry, the, the, the array that I defined earlier in storage into memory. So what this is essentially doing is it's loading 64 bytes of data into the memory storage, right? And here that you can ignore this, I'm, I'm actually just putting this here to avoid compiler warnings. It just helps me to work easier and I see this green tick here. Now, the next line, I'm loading again the free memory pointer from the same position, right, 0x40, because that's where the free memory pointer is maintained by Solidity. And this time I'm storing it in PTR end. Finally, at the very end of this function, I'm outputting using this log helper function, which I wrote, um, the start and the end. So we can see this very easily in our transaction log down here. Now, just for uh, completion, I'll show you what the log helper function looks like. It's just simply making use of the hard hat console log utility. So I'll pass in the message and two bytes 32 values. And in this case, for this example here, I'm only going to be passing in one value because that's all I'm interested in. Later on, we're going to pass in two values, but for now, we're just passing in the one value. So let's deploy this contract and run the function and we'll take a look at what, what's happening. So free memory pointer is here, and we've got the log output here. And we can see that the start at the beginning of the function call, the free memory pointer is 0x80, which is expected. Now you can ignore this line because that's just outputting the empty string as uh, hexadecimal, so that can be ignored. And then at the end of the function call, so once we load the value into memory here, the 64 bytes, we get 0c0, and if you subtract these two values together, so 0xc0 minus 0x80, you'll get 64, and that will represent the 64 bytes. Now, let's have a look at this in action if we debug this uh, statement. So let's go here and debug this, and we can see exactly what's going on with the memory uh, as, we, as we step through this function. Uh, so the initial state, as expected, at position 0x40, is the uh, storage of the memory pointer, the, lo the location that Solidity will use for the free memory pointer from this point onwards. Now, what we can do is we just keep stepping uh, down through the instruction set, 
And you, as you can see over on this screen here, you can see that Solidity is currently running this um, function or this part of the function here. And we can see, uh, we can keep an eye on the memory and keep uh, clicking through the instruction set until we see the values A and B loaded in to our memory. And there we go. So we can see that A, remember A is going to be the 10 here, was loaded in at slot 0x80, which makes sense because that was the free memory pointer at the time the function was called. And then the next value, B, was loaded in to the next 32-byte slot in memory. And notice that the free memory pointer has been updated to C0, which is essentially pointing to the next 32-byte slot in memory, which is C0, 0x C0, which, which is not shown on here because it's not being used at this moment. So I hope that helps give you some clarification as to how the free memory pointer is stored, what its initial value is, how it changes as the program is executed, and it's changed by Solidity. Uh, the bookkeeping is done by the Solidity compiler, essentially. So let's stop debugging and move back to the functions here. And I've got another function which is giving us an example about M size or me memory size, right? Now, memory size gives us the location of the furthest point in memory that was accessed during a particular function call. So let's take a look at this function. Now, I've got all of these parameters here, these variables that I've created so that we can keep track of everything and then I can just have all the logging at the end. So what am I doing here? Well, just as in the previous example, we're using an assembly block to get the start uh, position of the free memory pointer. As with every single time, it's always going to be 0x80. That's going to be the free memory pointer at the beginning. And then we're going to get the M size, and we'll see what that is when we log this out. Then we do the same action where we load, or let's say copy, the array and storage to memory. This can be ignored, it's just to hide the compiler warning. And then we load in the memory free memory pointer into PTR mid. This mid is just meaning in the middle of this function call, what does the free memory pointer look like? It's going to be the same as in the previous example, right? It's going to be 0xc0 because we've just loaded in 64 bytes. And we'll check what the M size returns in a minute. And then finally, we're going to do something interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to manually access some data that's far away from the current value of the free memory pointer. So we use mload to do this, memory load. And we're accessing position 0xff. And we're just popping that off so that we discard the value. The point is, is that the memory pointer, the free memory pointer that's managed by Solidity is not updated. And this is because any uh, memory access that you perform in YAL is not uh, known about by Solidity. So therefore, the, the automatic bookkeeping of the free memory pointer doesn't actually take place. So that's what we see here is that this will be unchanged. Uh, but we can see that the end size is now further away from the free memory pointer. So let's see this in action. And you can see here now we've got the three uh, logs being output. So the memory size and the pointer at the start is 0x80. That's the free, that's the pointer, the free memory pointer, which is expected. The end size is 0x60. That's because Solidity writes to the first three slots and the last slot is the position of the um, free memory pointer, which is at slot 0x40. So that's why this M size is the largest slot. Remember, Solidity leaves a gap between the last slot that it wrote to and the beginning of the free memory pointer. After that, we get uh, the values that we saw in the last example, which is the pointer is now at C0. Remember, we've just loaded 64 bytes, so the next free memory slot is C0. And the furthest that we've accessed memory is also C0. 
But when we look at the final output here, which is after we've run this assembly block here where we access memory directly using Mule, the free memory pointer has not changed as mentioned, but the M size is now much further away. So what you can take away from this example is to be very cautious when accessing and manipulating memory in a Solidity smart contract using YAWL. Always remember to update the free memory pointer if you access memory like this in YAWL, especially if you are writing to memory using YAWL because you can have unexpected consequences if you forget to update the free memory pointer. As mentioned before, Solidity manages this bookkeeping for us when we write pure Solidity code like here. The free memory pointer as demonstrated is updated by Solidity. We didn't have to do this, but here it's not updated when we use it in your. So I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video.